Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, the Nobo is back. And so uh, in this video, I just wanna uh, go over basically what Forest River did and then what I had to do to remedy uh, the things that they didn't fix. So um, this isn't really a complaint video, but at the end of the day, kind of is a complaint video. So let's go ahead and let's check this out. So this is our 2021 uh, Nobo 19.3. Uh, we bought it about a year ago and everybody wave at the camera. In May of, uh, 2021 right so it was a brand new trailer we took it on our first road trip uh in june of 2021 like a big road trip up to oregon and stuff uh you know a couple thousand miles and things and uh, i noticed that like down in here there was a bubble i'll see if i can find some pictures of that and i'll throw those in here uh but what it started to happen was uh the bubble pushed the bottom of this door out and the door wouldn't close properly and my daughter would complain of sunlight coming in up here. Uh, we didn't really think much of it. I really didn't think it was delamination because they tell you that this uh, Asdel, or I think that's what it's called, this new coating that they have out here um, does not uh, delaminate. But as time went on, uh, I started to notice um, up in here, it started doing the same thing. It started to, to bubble and, and pull out and it was pushing a gap in this uh this window here and so um we did our road trips and things through summer and then um eventually called up uh, forest river they told us to bring it back to the dealer and uh, by the time that we brought it back to the dealer it was also starting to delaminate here around the corner and um so now this is uh you know december or so of last year and the dealer told us um, that we should bring it in so they can take pictures of it, send it to Forest River. I had already sent my pictures to Forest River and Forest River told me to take it to um, our dealer so that they could fix it. And our dealer, when we brought it in, said that it was too big of a job that it had to go back to Forest River. So most people that I know that um, have a camp trailer, travel trailer and things like that, they're not uh, you know, in the same town as their dealer. You shop around, you find a good deal. Well, for us, ours is uh, about 130 miles away. And so I decided, I, you know, I'm just gonna leave the trailer here. You set it up. Um, they gave me an estimate that it should be shipped out within the next week. So it took about three weeks for it to get on the road. Nobody knew where it was going. I kept telling everyone that this is a Rogue River edition, that uh, it's made up in Oregon, and nobody believed me. Everybody wanted to you know, send it back to Indiana. Even the dealer, the, the people that we bought the trailer from, did not know where the trailer came from. And I kept telling them, you know, it's up there, uh, you know, same uh, area, same facility maybe as the R pods and all that other stuff that that's where it should go. Even Forest River was telling me, no, 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 it's gotta go back to Indiana. So, uh, right, I'm not, the, I'm not the trailer expert here. I don't build these things. I'm not the manufacturer. So I just went with it. And uh, eventually it comes back and it was like, okay, uh, yeah, you were right. Uh, it's gotta go into Oregon. And you know, this is kind of the first start of this process of the whole, I told you so scenarios, like all of this stuff is happening. Uh, the communication was terrible. And I know I've, I've done these things before with other trailers. Um, our last trailer that we had, we bought it and in less than a year, there was a recall on the axles. They had to send out entire new axles. And uh, that company was um, Riverside Retro, uh, what was it, White, White River uh, RVs, I think is the, the parent company of that. And we didn't have these issues. Um, the dealer that we bought it from uh, was a terrible dealer. And I told them, I was like, hey, this dealer's terrible. I don't want to work with them. And they said, well, we'll find an independent uh, RV repair near you. And we'll send everything to them and they'll take care of it. New axles had to come out by train. And uh, everything was repaired on that trailer in less than two weeks. So, um, right, you, you have your expectations. You have things that you expect. And uh, this just wasn't what I was expecting from a company like, like Forest River, but that was just the start of it. Now that we finally knew where the trailer was going, uh, they knew where the trailer was going. They set up a, a ship date and they got it sent out. It didn't take it long to get there, maybe about two days. And then uh, we started getting emails and things from Forest River. Uh, they gave us a like, a like a four to six week window. So at this point, this is now, uh, you know, February, we're thinking four to six weeks. So that's 
Right, that's March, middle of March. So they ended up hitting that mark. They called us not too long after that, and they told us, hey, your, your trailer is ready. It's being shipped out. Um, we try to get them to ship it to the local Forest River dealer that's here in town, and uh, by that time, the trailer was already sent out. Now, in our original warranty write-up, we told them of our concerns with this door, that this door was not shutting. There was a noticeable gap up here. And, um, you know, we wanted that fixed. Uh, we assumed that they were going to, they told us, replace this entire wall. Uh, so cap to back, uh, everything from the roof was coming off. They were gonna replace this entire wall. And that is essentially what they did. All new graphics, all new everything. They replaced this entire wall, put all the windows and everything back in. But a few weeks ago, when the trailer came back, uh, they called me, they told me it was ready. I went to go pick it up. It was a major hassle. They couldn't find our trailer at the tr uh, at the dealer. They didn't know where it was. It was on a separate lot. When they found it, it was absolutely filthy because I guess they uh, just tow these on the road. Um, you know, they're not on a flatbed trailer or anything. They just tow them. But anyway, the first thing that I did was I walked up and I looked at this door and this door right here, this door right here was uh, hanging about right here and it was just off center. You could see where it had been rubbing right here. And when I opened it, since they had just washed the trailer, all of this was wet. It was wet up here. This here was all wet, right? And uh, I could see where it had been rubbing right in here on the bottom of the door. And the whole door just moved. Like it, it just wiggled up and down. And I told him, I said, hey, you know what? Like, that's unacceptable. Um, I'm gonna take the trailer and everything. Let's see, now it squeaks. But I was willing to work with them. I, I told them, hey, send me the door. I'll replace it myself. It's not a big deal. I'll replace the door myself. I just want to get my trailer back, right? And so I walked over and uh, my stairs were down like this. And I went to go shut the door. And the door went shut. The door was hitting the bottom of the step and it was sticking out about this far. So what would happen is the door would shut when the stairs were in their upright position, right? The door would shut when the stairs were up, but the door would not shut when the stairs were down. And, you know, not gonna lie, I got a little irritated, uh, you know, had some words with the tech guy. Not, not like harsh words, right? But like, like words that you shouldn't have to have with professionals uh, that should be doing their job without a customer nagging them, right? Uh, I told them, you know, I want the doors fixed. Uh, Forest, they, they said that, you know, Forest River is gonna send some doors out, that they gotta send some pictures in. This was a Saturday. They said they'll take care of that on Monday. The doors should be coming out next week. And, um, you know, it shouldn't take them too long because I told them in the middle of April, I had a road trip. We were going out to Utah and stuff um, and I wanted my trailer back. So. Uh, two weeks go by, right? Um, I've been calling them. I had called them four times just to get an update because they said they were going to update me on, uh, you know, what was going on with the trailer and I couldn't get a hold of them. So, uh, finally my wife gets a hold of them and, uh, you know, the trailer had been sitting there for two weeks. Nobody had touched it. And they tried to say, oh, you know, we'd already sent those in. Uh, we're waiting on Forest River. Uh, Forest River said they hadn't received anything. Um, so finally they sent in the pictures. Now, 15 days later, send in the pictures. Uh, Forest River requested an additional video, so they had to send that in. This is now through the weekend, so now going on three weeks now. And uh, they had to send in some video because they didn't understand what was going on with the doors. And then Forest River told us it was going to be uh, six to 12 weeks before doors would even come in. They said that the dealer should have known this. They should not have said that they can fix it within two weeks and be ready for my next trip. Um, so I had to cancel that trip, right? Uh, just a bunch of different things that went on. Uh, total lack of communication in the industry. And there's this arm right here, right? This arm was all nice and shiny whenever we sent it off. Now it's all dull and looks used. Doesn't even look like the back arm, right? The back arm's still nice and shiny. I, I don't know what happened there. And these may seem like very basic, uh, mundane complaints and things like that. But you have to remember, we still have not had this trailer for an entire year. Uh, it's been missing for the last four months, uh, supposedly being worked on. And then it comes back like this. Uh, you spend a lot of money on a trailer, you expect to get some use out of it. 
uh, you expect to have issues because it is a house that gets towed down the road and shaken uh, the entire way. So you expect to have some problems. Um, you just expect where when they go and they fix those problems, you don't come back with more problems. I ended up telling them, hey, try to get the doors in working condition and uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna come pick it up. And so that's what I did a couple days ago. I went and picked it up. Um, the trailer was a little bit cleaner. They made an effort to clean it this time, which uh, was nice, um, but the doors were still awful. So now we're to the point, uh, story time's over, I guess. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna show you how I fix these doors. So this door here is pretty simple, right? Doors like this, uh, you've got, uh, you know, actual Phillips head screws. You can take these out you can shim these. You can do what you want. Uh, basically on this one, all that I did was oh, it squeaks. And that's why it squeaks. It's probably because of the way that I fixed it. Um, but I just grabbed it and just yanked up on it, bent everything back up into place, right? And I got it to where it shuts now, making no contact. And mind you, I would have been perfectly happy with the dealer doing that, right? Like, um, I'm an old DIY guy. You just do what it takes to get the job done. Um, and, you know, it functions. Uh, I don't think it really messed with the structural integrity. I guess it could have. Um, but those are things that they could have done themselves. Uh, the door wobbled. The door, like, like it, didn't, it didn't seat on the seal if that makes any sense like i could push on the door and it would want to open and close while it was latched it would still just it would rattle um i hope you like that impression so this is simple this is just for me working construction a bunch of years and knowing how to install a residential door uh, i just took this striker plate loosened this up here and i just scooted it back a little bit that was it right i scooted it back it sucks everything in there now the way that it's supposed to be it squeaks. I'll throw some graphite or something in there. But now it seals. It seals up here. I washed it yesterday. No water intrusion, no anything. Now, on to the uh, entry door. The entry door was a little bit different. So when I got the entry door, it was a mess. I couldn't, I couldn't lock it with the deadbolt. Uh, the deadbolt would not hit. This screen door would not close. You can see it still if you listen it still hits this little latch guy right here just a little bit and i can file that down and take care of that but this was hitting you can see on the edge right these are brand new doors and uh, you can see where this was hitting i had to sand this down because it had created nice jagged sharp edges to where right you grab this and uh you know it's going to cut your hand so I sanded that down, took care of that, and I'll hit it with some uh, black touch-up paint now. And um, now this closes here pretty nicely. If you notice, they line up with the screws right here. This is what was hitting. On this door here, it was also hitting right here. You can see to where it was hitting all these areas. Um, so to address that, first thing I did was I closed it. I came over here. I lined up my deadbolt right here. You can even still see my pencil mark probably, right? And I tried to figure things out. It's just simple, right? You're figuring these things out. Uh, these are things that they could have done. What I found out was that they had mounted this plate too high. So I moved it down to where it needed to go, drilled new holes. And then I took these screws. I don't know if you can tell, but these screws are perfectly flat on the top. They were big round. Uh, screws before and so I just took those stuck them in my vise and uh, hit them with a flap disc with the grinder and right took care of that problem uh, so now my door doesn't really hit there it's still a little tight in the space it hits along this entire edge on the striker plate and it still hits right here so I might come in here with a punch and uh, just catch that with a hammer and a punch and just pull that in now for the bottom of the door this little bottom half of the door here was hitting and you can feel it. I don't know if you can see it down here, but all that I did here was I just took these screws right here and drilled a couple new holes, 
push this up. There was plenty of room to push this up and I pushed it up and screwed those in. And now that does not, that does not hit. That's acceptable to me. I can lock it. It locks easily. Right, so now it's locked into place. Everything is sealed. I'm not catching up here on the top, really. Everything is good. There you have it. I mean, that didn't take a lot of work. It did not take a lot of expertise. That was all just basic common sense. And I guess uh, maybe maybe their hands are tied at the dealership. I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe they can't do these things because of uh, it'll void a warranty or something. But I'm waiting on new doors. These new doors are going to come in anyway. So, uh, and they knew that. So why not fix it? Why not make it usable? Right. It sat there for three weeks and they could have very well done these things. It, it wasn't a lot of work. I maybe spent an hour fixing both of these doors and uh, th that's not what I do for a living. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not a trailer service person, right? Like I don't do those things. Um, everything else in here, right? Because they had to pull this whole wall apart. They did an excellent job. You can see where they you know, recocked everything all the way around. Everything fits nicely. Uh, this actually, when we bought it, this table did not fit into this opening. Uh, it was something I didn't really care about because we don't use it in that position, but, uh, now it fits. So that's nice. Um, this is still doing what it does, but, um, it's good. Everything is good. They did nice work in here. Um, right. There's my Murphy bed. I'm sure they enjoyed that, uh, but everything is good. So I know at the beginning, I told you that this was not gonna be a complaint video, but I mean, that's, that's just kind of, I guess that's what it is, I'm sorry. Um, you know, these are things that you just expect that a trailer company or a trailer service center, somebody that's been in this business for a long time, these are things that they should be able to handle on a daily basis. These are things that they should just basically be able to take care of. Now, I'm not here to bash dealerships. I'm not here to bash any of that stuff. So um, I'm not gonna be saying those names. If you'd like to know who it was to avoid, um, you know, message me on Instagram or something and, and I'll, I'll tell you who it is. But that's just kind of like a, a personal reference and things. But Anyway, there we are. We're going to start our adventures again. We should have, uh, you know, some road trips coming up. Um, our, our trip was canceled that we had this week, so uh, you're probably going to get some fishing videos out of it. Um, but I'm glad to have the trailer back. I'm pretty sure whenever uh, my doors come in, I'm just going to tell them to, or when my doors are ready, I'm just going to tell them, hey, just ship those to my house and I'll put them in myself. Uh, because at this point, frankly, I trust myself more than I do them. Uh, you're right. They, they've already put doors in and you saw what they did. And that came from the factory. That came from the people that do this, uh, that are building these trailers. Oh, and one more thing. This is different. I don't know if you can see this or it's too dark, all right? But this is the whole bottom of my door. It's all roughed up. I don't know why that's like that, but it is. Oh, and that broke so i've got to replace that before i use it so there you have it i mean uh if if you found any of this useful if you enjoyed my storytelling uh make sure you hit that like button and if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet and you want to come along on some of our adventures you want to watch me work on my truck or uh, go fishing and stuff um make sure that you hit that that subscribe button and as always uh thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next video